Well, the sad thing is there are no outward signs of dental disease in dogs until things get really bad and the jaw breaks or the eye, you know, you know, gets infected or an abscess starts draining up the side of the face. There really are no outward signs of the vast majority of dental disease. And I see dogs all the time with severe dental disease, severe abscesses, fractured teeth, all that kind of stuff. And the dogs are eating and drinking and the clients have no idea that there's anything wrong uh, until, of course, we treat it. And then they're like, we have, we, we have, my dog's a puppy again. Why? It's because we took him out of pain and took him out of infection. So from that standpoint, externally, there's not much. Uh, looking inside your dog's mouth, there's a whole or cats, there's a whole bunch of things where you want to look at the, the level of, of calculus or tartar on the teeth. Look for red gums. Look for, see if the gums are receded. See if the teeth are broken. Um, you know, really one of the, the only outward signs of disease is bad breath. If your pet has bad breath and he's otherwise healthy, it's a sign that they need to come into the, to, to your veterinarian because uh, doggy breath, quote unquote, we hear all the time, it's not normal. It's a sign of disease. It's actually a sign of really bad disease, to be honest. So critically, we absolutely need to get these animals taken care of. As far as doing home care, the key to treating gum disease in dogs and cats is to control plaque. Same thing in us. You know, we brush and floss our teeth every day, I hope. We go to the dentist every six months. So the best thing to do is to remove that plaque on a daily basis. And ideally, you know, that's always been a toothbrush and toothpaste. Unfortunately, most pet parents, you know, either you know, don't have the time uh, or the pet won't allow them to brush the teeth. If they can, it's great. And but to do that, you need to start early. Um, you can't start brushing a seven, eight dogs, year old dog's teeth for the most part. The sooner you start, the better they're going to do um, with accepting it. And then go slow, you know, introduce it slowly and be consistent. And if you do that, you're going to be successful at brushing your pet's teeth. Unfortunately, like I said, most pet parents don't. Um, so there are a lot of uh, products out there um, that purport to do um, a good job for dental disease in dogs and cats as opposed to like dry dog food. Everyone thinks that it's good for your dog's teeth because it controls tartar, but it controls tartar on the surface of the tooth, not there along the gum line. A pet should have dentistry every year uh, for several reasons. One, they typically need a cleaning at that time. Um, but as a veterinary dentist, what we find on a regular basis is teeth that are um, broken or have some disease that when we look at it on the wake exam, we just can't tell. So it's so common for me to find stuff when the pet's under anesthesia that we weren't expecting it. And I think veterinarians and pet parents really miss the fact that an oral exam is a critical part of the cleaning. It's not just scaling and polishing the teeth. It's cleaning above and below the gum line, full mouth evaluation, all that kind of stuff. So the key is that we absolutely have to do an exam every year. Now, if you have a large breed dog or a cat, they're more resistant to gum disease. So if you push it out a couple of years, the periodontal cleaning is not as important. Um, the oral exam still is. But if you have a small breed dog, that dog, if you have a dog under 10 pounds, they need their first cleaning before a year of age every year thereafter because they are so prone to gum disease for the most part. And the thing is, when you do this on a regular basis, and especially if you add home care, you're going to really decrease the amount of extractions that you need to do and other things like that.